Welcome back to the second instalment in our development series for the C8 Corvette. In my hands, I am holding the final carbon fiber intake system for this car. So let's take a closer look at this intake, the components and the performance data. So I have in front of me both intakes fully assembled with the stock airbox on my right and the new Venturi carbon system fully assembled on my left. Clearly there's a very visible difference between the two, uh, not just in the shape, but the way they work and the flow paths are completely different. It's been completely redesigned. And what we'll do now is take them apart so we can show you in component form. So we're going to compare the stock system with our system and we're gonna follow the direction of the airflow from the outside in. So the first thing is the actual inlet ducts. So on the stock system, you have this plastic inlet duct section, which secures to the side panels where the openings are. The airflow then moves into this rubber flexible section, which allows the airbox to move with the engine. And then this directly bolts onto the central airbox. Just a, a quick point on the stock parts. The inside of those stock plastic inlets is actually pretty good. It's a nice smooth curve where it goes from that irregular oval type shape down to the airbox, which is a more regular oval uh, on the inlet of the filter. With our design, what we've done is we've kept that initial section very short. So that's our part, which secures onto the side panels of the car and it's very short and we've kept it open to that opening for the, for the airflow. Now that then secures to our EPDM flexible parts. Again, that allows for movement with the engine. And if you look at the difference in the length of that, you'll see what I mean. So that is much shorter than the stock version. And the reason for that is that we wanted to open up the volume as quick as possible after the flexible section. And that then secures to this carbon fiber piece. This carbon fiber duct secures onto our main central airbox area, just like the stock rubber section does. And you can see there, there's a dramatic change in cross sectional area. So the volume changes rapidly. So the assembled part looks like this. So you've got your airflow coming in from the side panel here, through the rubber section, and then into our carbon fiber duct, which opens up dramatically in size. The inside of that carbon fiber is again, fully pre prepregged so you can see carbon fiber on the inside and it's smooth on the inside as well. So in comparison with the stock now, you can see Whereas the stock part retains the same internal area and cross-sectional all the way from the panel to the airbox, our one opens up dramatically as soon as it exits the rubber part. And that then mates to our central airbox area. With the airflow having moved through the flexible sections, it's now entering into the main filtration area. I've got in front of me the main central airbox with the filter inside and the Eventuri main airbox section. I'm going to explain how the airflow moves through both of these. Let's start with the stock airbox first, which is very cuboid in nature. If I take the front panel off, you can see the stock filter is cylindrical in shape and airflow enters through the side openings here into that chamber and then through the filter and then 90 degrees out through the back of the airbox into the MAF tube. I have mentioned this in the previous video, but I'll reiterate. If you look on the inside of this airbox, that's a very sharp edge right there with a 90 degree drop. That means that as the airflow comes into this airbox, you can have a flow detachment around this sharp edge, which isn't good for laminar flow and it adds drag to the whole system. With the filter removed, you can see the path that the airflow has to, to move through to get to the MAF tube. 
the, the filter is in this area and it has to basically negotiate a 90 degree bend immediately into that math tube area. There is a small kind of velocity stack right there, but it's not massive in terms of its size and there will be turbulence issues. If you look at the filter, you'll see more apparently the issues with the flow here. So in the middle of that stock filter, there is a flow divider to separate the two sides from meeting in terms of airflow. But that flow divide has a very sharp 90 degree face. So the airflow is hitting that face and then moving down into the MAF tube. Again, there's going to be a lot of circulation and turbulence around those sharp corners, which will introduce more drag to the system. Now, the reason they've done this again is because of restriction in space in that trunk area. And we have completely moved away from that restriction and gone as big as possible, which I'm going to show you now. With the Eventuri intake, straight away, you can see the size of the openings for the filtration area. So you've got a whole mouth of that filter, which is pulling the air in from, which is how I explained when the airflow comes through that flexible section, we've opened it up as soon as possible. And you've got two very obvious chambers of flow, which then smoothly meet in the middle down to the MAF tube. We don't have the same problem as a stock airbox does with having that sharp 90 degree face flow division. Our one is very smooth, meets in the middle and comes down to the MAF tube. If I remove the filters, you will be able to see a bit more about how this works. So if I remove one side, we're using two large cone filters and these are our own custom designed filters. We have a patent on this concept, which is our Venturi concept system. And basically with a conventional cone filter set up, the cone will be facing this way. So the airflow is coming from this direction into the cone and then out here to the engine or the, or the MAF tube. In our case, we flip those around. So now the flow is entering a large mouth of the filter, coming through the converging side of the filter and then the housing itself dictates how the airflow shapes down smoothly. That allows for the flow to be a lot smoother and to allow the flow to narrow down much more gradually as opposed to a sharp reduction in cross-sectional area. With the filter removed you can see the inside of our housing. There's exposed carbon fibre in there because we only use pre prepared carbon fibre with no fibreglass that allows us to keep the inside surface nice and smooth for airflow. You can also see how it's nicely converging into that MAF tube section. So the two flow chambers are converging into that central MAF tube without the need for a sharp 90 degree bend. It's more apparent if I show you from this angle where the airflow is coming into the filters and then smoothly channeling upwards into that longer MAF tube section without the need for having a flow divider or a plate in the middle. If I show you the comparison between that shape and the stock airbox shape, you'll see that more clearly. So whereas the back of the airbox is flat and there's a small trumpet section on the inside of that MAF tube, it's essentially moving up 90 degrees straight away. Compare that to our version, where you've got a much more gradual change of shape and change of direction, which allows the airflow to travel with more smooth streamlines and less drag essentially. So the flow rate through this will be superior compared to the flow rate through this type of design. We've got the fully assembled system back now, just to show you the rest of the components involved in this intake. Now, although we focus a lot of time on the flow, we also focus a lot of time on the fitment and the fitment has to be perfect. So a lot of time is invested into making sure the bracket work and the way it mounts to the car is as good as OEM. So in front of you, you can see now how the system is assembled with all the bracket work. I'll turn this around for you. Looking at the back of the intake, you can see this cage system, which we've designed and that mounts to the stock airbox locations. 
the cage also has openings for the harness to clip to. If I turn this further around, you can see two flat panels and those are heat shields to prevent radiative heat from affecting the intake when it goes over the exhaust. The final component is obviously the silicon coupler which connects the back of the MAF tube to the throttle body. And that is this right here. This is a custom made silicon coupler. And importantly, the inside of that has been designed to keep things as smooth as possible. So you can see there's like a lip and a raised surface. That's for the throttle body and the intake to sit inside so that the actual inside faces have no steps to encounter. So everything once it's fitted is nice and flush internally and the airflow can go through a continuous tube, so to speak, without seeing any flat edges. Hopefully you'll agree with me that it's a very aesthetically pleasing intake, but you're only gonna see this out of the car once. So how about we install the intake and then show you the final part of the system which completes the full Eventuri Corvette C8 intake system. Due to the shape of the new intake, we can't use the stock panel to, to close it off. And modifying that panel was out of the question. So we had to remake a new panel to fit our intake. From past experience, having made intakes for Porsches, for example, where the rear bumpers completely cover the intake, which is a shame because of the design and the fact that we're using carbon fiber, that you can't see the intake once it's fully installed. On the Corvette, we wanted to change that. So since we were making our own panel anyway, we thought why not make it from a clear polycarbonate to actually show off the intake once it's fully installed. And now I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So that's the intake installed in its entirety alongside with the clear polycarbonate panel. It's a very nice look. You can see the carbon fiber through the panel. As soon as you open that trunk, it's gonna be on display. Importantly, the roof still fits in the trunk and there's a very nice usable space still available. The only thing we did have to modify was the carpet. So we had to cut a hole in the carpet to allow the panel to come through. We do supply this edging to finish that off. And when it comes time to replace the carpet, if you go back to stock, that panel is very reasonably priced from your local Chevy dealer. So that's the intake installed in the car, but how does it perform? Let's go back upstairs and look at the performance data. Alongside having our own development car in the UK, it's also really important to have external data. And for that, we call upon the expertise of Paragon Performance, who are a US-based Corvette specialist. They tested our prototype on their own car and they gave us feedback on math values, temperatures, and of course, performance. I've now got Graham from Paragon Performance joining me on the line, and we're gonna to speak to him now. Hi Graham, how's it going? Thanks for uh, joining the, the talk. Doing good, how are you doing? Good, thank you, thank you. So I know it's been a while since we discussed the, the Corvette system, but uh, let me take you back to when we were doing the development. And just to get your thoughts on initially um, the installation, how it went on the C8 Corvette Stingray, um, and then obviously you guys helped us a lot with data logging and the performance testing. And then yep. you know, maybe some thoughts on what you found when you did the back-to-back -back testing and how you did the testing as well. Sure. So as far as installation, yeah, everything went very smooth. Obviously you guys put a lot of effort into making sure that the fit and the finish on this product is you know, at OEM quality. So no issues there. We're very happy with how the system goes in and how it fits and how it looks. Of course, it looks wonderful. Um, in terms of testing and performance, we have our dyno jet here with a, with a fully enclosed dyno cell. That means that we have airflow control in the room to make sure that the room is always getting fresh, clean air to the front of the car and into the intake. So 
we can control that. It also allows us to control our temperatures between runs. So if we're, if we're testing back-to-back um, -back runs, we can make sure that every run is done exactly the same temperature starting point, both in the room and fluid temperatures, no issues with heat soak. And if we're testing back-to-back -back products, same thing, we'll make sure we do the installation on the same day. We'll baseline the car beforehand, several runs at the same conditions, put the product on, test it again, again, making sure that all conditions are the same, while we're also data logging the ECU to make sure that everything is being ran the same in the tune, same timing, same fueling, everything else. So that's our testing methodology there. So Okay, and, when and we just, tested just, the, just to interrupt, so when you did the C8 Corvette, um, the stall care box was tested first, and then everything was left as yep. it is. The car was on the dyno, and you swapped yep. over to the Eventuri on the same day, same conditions. It, exactly. So we took a completely stock car, and we did some baseline runs that day. Then we installed the Eventuri system and ran it again, and looked at the difference in performance there. And as we see in the dyno graphs, there is more power gained throughout the entire power band, all the way to redline. Okay. Uh, I guess... Um, just looking at that graph, I think that's what's quite impressive is it's not just uh, a peak gain in a small segment of the RPM at the end, it's literally across the entire range of the RPM. Yep. And is, is that the differentiator between what you'd say we've developed as, as opposed to what else there is in the market? Because I know you did a, a big group test um, previously on intakes yep. on this car. We hadn't um, released our system at that point, but you did a big kind of back-to-back -back group test on intakes. So how yeah. would our one compare to what you found generally in other intakes? Sure, so as, as part of the testing we did in the past, we did test a variety of intakes. We also tested some air filters themselves. And we even did a test where we completely took the air box off and just let the engine pull in air just as a test to see what that would do. And when we, when we compared that to the Eventuri, the Eventuri, had the power gains across the entire power band. Different intake systems would sometimes have power in different areas, but a lot of times it really wouldn't do anything. And in fact, even just simply taking an air box off doesn't unlock a bunch of power. So through that, we learned it is very important that the design of the intake really does funnel the air, shape the airflow, and straighten it out before it goes in the engine. That definitely seems to make a difference in the power band. Yeah, I think that's something that a lot of people kind of um, misconstrue is that if you remove an airbox from an engine you may automatically think that's the least restrictive and the best way forward but actually isn't because there's no bell mouth there's no uh, smooth yep. entry into the throttle body so in many mm -hmm. cases you may even lose power because the air is very turbulent as it goes into the throttle body that's what we saw yeah it's trying to grab the air from a large space all around it as opposed to if you have a properly designed intake system, the air is going to get grabbed, funneled, shaped, and brought in in an organized fashion into the engine. And that's definitely worth it. That's worth power. Yeah, 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 cool. So the intake system has been out for a while. Um, you know, a lot of people are running the system and, uh, you know, we've, we have heard some comparisons about um, the peak power gain. I think people also have this uh, sort of thing about power gains and quoted power gains and they don't look at the entirety of the graph so two intake systems making the same power may not perform the same on the road because it depends on the characteristics of how it's delivered in the power graph itself that's very true yeah a lot of people when they they ask how much horsepower does something make they're, they're looking for one number and that number is always just on the dyno it's always just a peak at a given rpm point it really doesn't tell the full story you really have to look at the entire graph, look at the average horsepower gains, look at different horsepower points, different RPM points to see how something is really performing as a whole, because you know you don't care about necessarily just that one peak number. Exactly, yeah. And I think that's where um, this intake has done its job. You know, you've got a, a gain across the entire graph, as people can see. Yep, absolutely. Brilliant. Could you give us a bit of uh, feedback on how the car drives with the intake? Absolutely. So during the testing, one of the most important things I'm looking at is the mass airflow sensor reading. These cars use a combination of mass airflow, which is a sensor that reads the airflow coming in before the throttle body, and they use a combination of manifold pressure and kind of a speed density formula. 
but it's important to make sure that the mass airflow is read correctly and it's smooth so that the operation of the vehicle is smooth. So when I'm looking at different intakes, comparing it to stock, I want to make sure I'm seeing smooth MAF input. And with the Eventuri system, that's exactly what I saw. It, it reads accurately. It reads close to stock, which is what we want. We don't want some big variation. And all through the power band, it's smooth as you would expect. So when you drive the car with the Eventuri intake, it feels very smooth, very crisp, and very responsive. Excellent. Yes, yeah, that's, that's great to hear. And I think that's... Uh mirrored across a lot of our customers who've said the same thing and the car feels smooth yep. it feels more aggressive you know it's much more responsive on the throttle body on the sorry the, the pedal as well as the throttle pedal so um yeah that's 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 great to hear um you know we always appreciate uh, working with um partners who know exactly what they're doing when it comes to testing and data logging it gives us a lot of confidence yep. to move forward so you know just thank you so much for helping us out with the performance testing and data logging gives us a lot of confidence and helps us to create the best we can. Sure, very welcome. Thanks, Graham. Thank you again to Paragon Performance for all the data logging and performance testing. As you can see from the dynagraphs, the intake produced 15 to 18 wheel horsepower and around 16 foot-pounds of torque. Very importantly, as we've mentioned on the call, that performance gain is across a huge, or it's actually the whole RPM range and not just a small amount at the peak. And that's important because that translates to how the car drives on the road and you can actually feel the difference in terms of throttle response and the way the car picks up from lower RPMs, middle, uh, the mid-range RPM, all the way to the peak. So that wraps up our in-depth analysis of the C8 Corvette Stingray intake system. It's now available from your local Eventuri dealer. Please contact them for pricing and availability. The Stingray done, now we can look forward to the Z06 intake so stay tuned in the coming months for an in-depth analysis at that system. Mm -hmm.